Hi, Obi Joe here. Welcome to the Pathfinder Field Kitchen. Uh, Pathfinder is one of our uh, tent units here at Tomahawk. Um, thanks for joining me. I'm going to teach you guys how to bake a rhubarb pie um, in a Dutch oven. Um, the rhubarb came straight from our greenhouse. So a big thanks to Starlight for cutting that up for me. That was awesome. Um, so to start off, what I'm gonna do, baking a pie has so many steps. And the most important step about baking a pie is making sure that your crust is pretty cold. Um, I chose to bake the pie here on a pretty cold day here at camp. Um, it's a pretty cold temperature. And so I'm gonna start with the crust that way it'll sit out and get nice and cold. Um, so, and to do so, first what I wanna do is start with my flour. Um, I'm gluten free and so in my flour, um, it takes two cups of flour for the crust. I also put a fourth a teaspoon of xanthan gum already in my flour here. Um, so that way it, um, because I'm gluten free, I need that xanthan gum. But um, just for a normal pie, you just use two cups of straight flour. So I'm gonna pour that here into my glass dish. So there we go, set that aside. Um, so with flour and when you're baking a pie, you wanna get as much air into the flour as possible. So I'm actually just gonna kinda like stir it up a bit and get it nice and fluffy um, because I want a lot of air in that flour. Um, a lot of times when you pour flour like straight out of the bag um, and you kind of pack it down to get that even measure, that pushes all the air out of your flour and you want to get air back into your flour um, before you're making your pie. So a lot of times what else you can do, you can stir it, you can also cut it or just like fluff it with a fork. Um, so this is what is called a cutting method. I'm gonna be doing it again later on um, when I go to put in my butter. But um, you just kinda cut that in, fluff my flour back up. Um, for being gluten-free, it's also adding my xanthan gum in. So that works really well. All right, um, next, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, two tablespoons of sugar. So there's my two tablespoons of sugar and a half a teaspoon of um, salt. So I'm gonna add that in. Sorry, it was two teaspoons of sugar, not tablespoons, two teaspoons of sugar. Sorry about that. So now I'm gonna cut that up. I wanna mix that in really well again. Get that real well mixed. Get it even more fluffier, that flour. Get a lot of air in it. The more air that's in your flour, the better. You can use a fork. Um, you can use like a, if you have a pastry knife, you can use a pastry knife. I just like using two knives. It works just as well. But again, you can either stir it, get it real well mixed in there. Oops. We'll be all right. Um, if flour, flour does have a tendency to kind of go everywhere, and if you do like just now like have a little bit of flour that comes out, it'll be okay because when we go to roll out the dough, um, I'm gonna be rolling it out with more flour. So um, if I lose a little bit of it, it'll just, um, a little bit more, I'll go right back into it. I'm then gonna take um, my butter. Um, you can also use shortening. Um, depends on like what kind of crust consistency that you like. Um, I'm going to be using butter, but a lot of people also use shortening. Um, shortening is, makes an excellent pie crust as well. Um, especially if you're dairy free, using shortening is a perfect alternative. Um, but it's going to take um, approximately um, three fourths of a cup of butter or shortening. So I'm actually going to cut it up a little bit more. So now that I have um, my butter cut up and put in my flour, I'm now gonna cut um, the flour into the butter. 
Um, so again, it's just this method of using kind of your two knives. If you have a pastry knife, um, you can also do that, but you would um, also do this with your shortening. You would just kind of like come in and cut the shortening into your dough. Um, really what you're looking for, um, you know that you're gonna be done because you're gonna not see that like luster um, of the butter or of the shortening anymore. And it's gonna be just like a whole bunch of like little chunks and stuff like that. At that point, um, we're then gonna add our ice water. So I'm just gonna keep cutting the butter into the flour. Okay, now that I have finished cutting my butter into my flour mixture, um, I'm now going to start adding water. Um, I have about six tablespoons of water and I'm going to be adding like a little bit at a time um, until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. Um, essentially, you want your dough to be nice and wet. Um, if it kind of cracks and crumbles, um, you're going to need to add a little bit more water. Um, a little bit more water is better than less water. Um, you just want to make sure you don't have that like kind of crumble type feeling. So what I'm going to do is in my flour, create like a little hole. Um, so like so. And then I'm going to pour my water in. And then I'm going to continue that method. All right. So I'm going to create another hole, pour my water in, and then fold over. So um, I went ahead and uh, finished just stirring up my dough. Um, so I've got it here. You don't want to work um, pastry dough too much. Um, otherwise, it kind of like gets really flattened out. You want to make sure to kind of keep that air in it. Um, that's why like always when you're mixing, um, you want to use like a folding method or, um, you know, you want to cut your dough, um, things like that. So when you come in here, um, just to kind of like mix it up you wanna keep cutting. Um, so what I'm gonna work on now is um, prepping my Dutch oven. I'm gonna get my Dutch oven all prepped up um, and then I will work on the filling. All right, so now um, I am ready to prep that Dutch oven. Um, for the meantime, we already got some coals started and we've just been heating the Dutch oven um, up on the coals. So that way uh, they're, the Dutch oven will get like nice and warm. So I'm gonna set it on my metal rack that I've got right here. I'm actually gonna line the cast iron with parchment paper for my pie. You could just like grease your cast iron really, really well. Um, but essentially what um, I wanna also do is create kind of a lift within my pie. So I'm gonna take parchment and I'm actually gonna fold So what I'm going to do is create like an X method inside my um, Dutch oven, like so. I'm then going to grab another piece and 
And this one is just gonna go in on top of that X. And this is where my pile actually sit. Um, I'm gonna set my Dutch oven aside, grab my lid back. I got that prepped and I'm gonna actually just set it back on the coals. Um, all I'm doing by just kind of setting it on the coals is just reheating um, and preheating my Dutch oven. Um, you don't ever want to start with a cold Dutch oven or a cold pan. Um, having a nice hot pan to start off with. Um, you wouldn't put your baked goods in um, a cold oven. You don't want to put your baked goods in a cold um, cast iron Dutch oven either. So you want to make sure to heat it up before you start. All right. Now we're gonna work on the filling. I have um, the wonderful fresh rhubarb that um, Starlight ended up picking yesterday. Um, it just smells so amazingly delicious, um, fresh marm rhubarb. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, chop this up real fine like, and then um, add it. I'm, I need about five cups of rhubarb. I finished chopping my rhubarb. Um, I ended up having a little bit over five cups, um, but that's okay. I just ended up using all of it. Um, a little extra rhubarb isn't gonna hurt anything. Um, it cooks down really well. So um, it's okay if you have like approximately five cups. I like to have more rhubarb anyway. Um, I'm gonna keep all of my other measurements the same um, just because I really wanna bring out a little bit more of that rhubarb flavor. Um, so I use like a little bit more than five cups, but approximately five cups worth. Um, you're then going to take flour and cinnamon, uh, about a fourth a teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that in there. And now uh, five tablespoons of flour. Um, again, because I'm gluten-free, I just put like a sprinkling of xanthan gum. Um, but otherwise, like if you're just using regular flour, um, you don't need to do that. But about five tablespoons and a smidge, like a little sprinkle of xanthan gum. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and measure out my sugar and my butter. Um, my sugar and butter, I'm not actually gonna put straight in my filling. Um, I'm actually gonna be using a, a different kind of method. Um, I'm gonna need about uh, a tablespoon and a half um, of uh, butter. And then I'm gonna need about um, one and a fourth, one and a third cup of sugar, uh, depending on how sweet or how tart that you like it. Um, I like my rhubarb um, flavor to be like really sweet, um, but still bring out a lot of that tartness. Um, now I'm going to prep my crust. So I've laid down a piece of parchment paper. Um, it's just gonna make it a little bit easier to get inside my pan. Um, I'm then going to just kind of dump my dough right here. And I'm gonna split it in two. Um, what I wanna do is have two halves, um, one that's just like kind of slightly larger than the other, um, because one is gonna be my bottom and one will be my top. So I'll probably go about like that. Um, this will be my top here. And I'm just gonna set that back in my pan. I'm going to roll out my dough. Um, so I'm gonna use a little bit of flour, just kind of flour my rolling pin just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is roll it out um, until I have about a quarter of an inch of thickness. I've rolled out the bottom um, of my dough. And so now I'm going to set that aside and I'm gonna roll out the top of my dough. 
go. All right, so now I'm done rolling out the top. And so I'm gonna set that aside. And then I'm gonna grab my Dutch oven and we're gonna layer the bottom crust into the Dutch oven. I ended up laying um, the crust down into my Dutch oven. Um, so you can kind of come real close and see. Um, but just like that, and you can kind of see like the X kind of in the middle that's just gonna lift it up a bit. Um, if you need, you can just kind of, um, you know, rearrange those like as needed. Um, you don't want to press too much of the dough um, into the um, parchment here. Now I'm going to grab my sugar. And what I'm going to do is sprinkle sugar on the bottom um, of my crust. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of sugar on the bottom. Um, what that is going to do is kind of caramelize the bottom of my crust so it doesn't get that like real kind of sogginess. Now I'm going to take my filling. And I'm going to put a layer of my filling down. Probably gotta get some of that crust back up. It keeps falling on me. It'll be all right. Then I'm gonna grab the rest of my sugar. Sprinkle that on top. Like so. I'm gonna save that for the very top. So put in the rest of my filling. And sprinkle the rest of my sugar. I'm gonna use just a touch, I'm gonna leave just a touch more uh, because I'm gonna take my butter and I'm just gonna kind of dot um, the top of my pie with butter. take the top of my crust and um, pop it just right on top here. So um, essentially what I've done here is um, the lid of my Dutch oven kind of cooled down a bit. Um, but you'll see I kind of like cut some of the paper around. Um, and then I put these two skewers um, on top like so. Because when I go to put my lid on, um, essentially what that's going to do is create a nice gap in here. So the airflow can come in here um, and it doesn't kind of um, sog my pie real bad. Um, so that'll just create a nice airflow um, coming in and circulating um, around the inside of my Dutch oven. So now I'm gonna prep my coals. And, um, I have a number 10 Dutch oven. Um, so again, um, you know, you want more 
um, more cools on the top and less on the bottom because again, that like heat rises um, and there's like, it's gonna be closer to the heat. Um, so less coals on the bottom, more coals on top. Um, but with pie, what you wanna do is first bake that crust um, before you essentially like bake the rest um, and in the middle. So you need to actually bake your pie um, to start off at around 425 degrees for about 20 minutes. In order to do that, I'm actually gonna like um, almost double the amount of coals that I would normally put on top. Now baked my pie um, a bit at the cooler temperature. Um, some of my coals started kind of burning down. So I ended up adding um, a bunch of like kind of little extra ones. I just wanted to make sure to keep it nice and um, warm. Um, so as you can see, like some of these like little tiny little ones, um, I ended up just keeping on there, but I replaced like some of the bigger ones to let it cook down. Um, so now we're gonna take these off. Oops. There we go. And I'm gonna get off this ash dust and we're gonna move it and check it out. All right. Okay, I'm gonna really carefully lift that lid off because I don't want to get any more of that ash on. There we are. Ooh, it looks awful tasty. Um, because it is gluten-free crust, um, again, it just, it doesn't really brown like a normal crust does. But what I am going to do is kind of just tap it with my fingernail um, in hopes that I kind of hear like a, a nice donk kind of sound. I just want to make sure so you can kind of hear the, the nice crispiness of it. Um, and what we're gonna do is just let it sit um, for about 10, 15 minutes, um, just to kind of like really solidify um, inside there. Oh, now what I'm gonna do um, is um, pull this guy out. Um, so I'm gonna move my Dutch oven. It's cooled down a little bit to where I can, um, just move it to this like hot pad right here, no problem. And then I'm going to pull out um, this here. I hope you enjoyed this Dutch oven cooking. Um, I'm really excited to try the pie. Um, it smells absolutely delicious.